Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Dark Souls 2. So last time, we're taking our second boss of the game, the Last Giant. Should have technically been the first boss, but either way, he did. Now we gotta take on Hades Tower of Flame. And yeah, we should be killing two bosses in this video, the Rump Rider and Ornstein's kind of reject cousin. Assuming nothing goes catastrophically wrong, but it very well could, because... Still kind of rusty, and this dagger does jack shit for damage. And yes, I know we're a mage, yes, I know we have spells, but I don't want to waste them and not be able to shoot the bosses, you know? It's just kind of logic. Right, so, the deal with the Rump Rider is you can beat up a couple of optional sentinel fellas here, I guess they're called old knights, and you can raise platforms in the boss fight area to make it easier so that you don't get knocked into the water. I tend to do that, even though you don't need to. And if you don't, you can actually get the Rump Rider to fall in on his own. Though, for some damn reason, even though I've seen people do it, like in co-op with me, hey, there we go. <laughs> even though I've seen people make the Rump Rider fall off, I've never been able to do it myself. I don't know why, like, the dude just teeters on the edge and he just, he doesn't do it. I hate the guy. So yeah, I always raise the platforms just to guarantee I'm not gonna die drowning, cause... I swear to god, gravity kills me more in Dark Souls than anything. And you can kind of see him over there. I believe you can probably snipe and kill him, though I don't know if they changed that. But I think you could at some point. Maybe you still can? I don't really know. Now, if we wipe out all these dudes in this room, then we'll be able to raise the rest of the platform for the boss fights. These dudes are dangerous, though. When you kill big swordy fella here, the other two are gonna charge you down. Now, I think if we hug this wall, we might be able to... Oh, no, we can't. He's totally, like, all up in my grill. Ow! Dick! Okay, no, 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 no. Okay, that's bad. Very nearly died there. Don't think he would have quite killed me in one more hit, but... We were close. And speaking of which, I think we've actually got rid of the... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If you hug this wall, the other guy tends to go away. So, that way you can one-on-one -on -one this fella. And that's extremely handy, because... Even though those dudes aren't that dangerous, two-on-one... They can really mess your shit up. I'm your body. I'm going to kill you. Eventually. So will it. <laughs> I don't know, man. I love the way you just, like, when you start off as a mage in Dark Souls, even the same thing in Dark Souls 1, you just shoot soul arrow after soul arrow after soul arrow. But, you know, fear not. Soon. Very soon, in fact. Probably next episode, we're gonna be getting a whole bunch of new spells, and we can make some crazy shit happen. Well, nothing too crazy, let's be honest here. All the real crazy mage shit is really either in New Game Plus, or right near the end of the game. But don't worry. We're gonna get some new spells. It's gonna be awesome. Okay, and there's our boss fog down there. Just one more dude to deal with. Now, this area on New Game Plus, I would genuinely say one of the toughest areas in the game. Like, it, as far as ramp and difficulty goes between New Game and New Game Plus, this area is definitely up there. There's like red dudes freaking everywhere. They don't respawn, but holy shit, some of them are really dangerous. But of course, we'll deal with that when we get there. Speaking of New Game Plus, as I mentioned, we are going to be doing that pretty much back-to-back -back with this run. Now, the way we're going to handle this run is I'm not going to do all of the optional stuff. I ain't killing the Ancient Dragon again for a start. If you really want to see the Ancient Dragon fights, you can go check out my blind run. I, I, it's not even so much that he's hard, it's more that it just takes a long time and it's frustrating. I, I don't find that boss fight. Ow, you dick! I don't fight... Buddy, I'm going to have to ask that you stop doing that. I was trying to parry him, but it just didn't work. But yeah. Long story short, I find the Ancient Dragon fight boring. We might do some of the optional stuff. We're probably at least going to go to some of the DLC, you know. For example, uh, the Fume Knight. I freaking love the Fume Knight, man. Dude's tough as hell, and that's why he's fun. And yeah, we'll probably take on, you know, the Dark Luck and stuff like that. But we're not going to do absolutely everything. We're going to try and get through New Game quick enough, but not spend, you know, freaking forever. And we're also not going to just do the bare minimum. It's going to be somewhere in between going quickly and going slow, if that makes any sense whatsoever. So yeah, when we get to New Game Plus, we will take our time a little bit more. Still not going to do the Ancient Dragon though, because just fuck that guy. Genuinely. Such a boring boss fight. It, it's it's like a 10 plus minute fight. It really is. Maybe a bit, but I, I really I'm dying? What the hell? Okay. Note to self, stop trying to parry him, because it is not working. <laughs> Holy shit. No, 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 okay. That yeah, was close. Chug on that sunny D. Yummy! Now we're out. That's bad. But he's nearly dead. The Rump Rider should not be giving us problems. To be fair, he's not really. I'm just dicking around trying to parry him and apparently failing miserably. So yeah, 
that's the plan. We just gotta do whatever the hell I feel like doing in regular game. So anyone that's using it as a walkthrough can get through the game using it as a walkthrough. But that way, at the same time, I don't have to commit myself. There we go. Victory get to it. Took way longer than I probably should have done, but whatever. But yeah, that way I don't have to commit myself to doing things I don't like. E.g. the Ancient Dragon. I'm trying to think of anything else in the game that's optional that I really dislike as much as that's... Not really now. And we're gonna do checkpoints. Okay, bonfire. Now, as a chick over there, I, I'll be honest with you, I straight up forget her name. Because I very rarely ever talk to her. Because essentially, if you're playing as a cleric, aka you're using faith as your main form of offense, aka lightning, you want to talk to her. She will sell you a whole bunch of low-level faith spells, and she's very handy for that. But we're not a cleric. We're a sorcerer. So she's got pretty much nothing that's of any use to us. Like, genuinely. So, I never really bother, because I don't really ever play as a cleric. I did once. That was a long time ago. So yeah, generally speaking, I never really talk to her. You do need to talk to her later for the main quest, but again, I don't think she even says her name then, so that's why I have no bloody idea. I know I've heard it before, but I just straight up can't remember it. Anyway, so if we go down the other end where the dude on the right was blocking that doorway, the one that backed off from us, we can get to the other boss, aka Ornstein. Now, here's the question, and we don't know the answer to this. I'm hoping... This is one of the things that I really hope they uh, disclose more information on in the Scholar of the First Sin when they re-release it in April. Because they've specifically said that they're going to amend a bunch of item descriptions. Which is like the lore of the game. That's the way you find out about a lot of things. Now when you... Stop it, buddy! Get out of here! Then when you kill Ornstein, or the old Dragon Slayer, he drops the old Leo ring, which was Ornstein's ring. Because Ornstein... Just so anyone doesn't know. From Dark Souls 1, Ornstein was one of the four knights of Gwyn. Gwyn being the last boss. So yeah. Uh, so Ornstein was an incredibly important knight in the lore. And there's a lot of speculation that the Ornstein that you fight in Dark Souls 1 isn't actually Ornstein. That he's just like, uh... What's the word I'm looking for here? A uh, fake, essentially. Now, it's a long story why people think that, and I won't really go into that, because this ain't Dark Souls 1, so screw it. The point is, some people think that the Ornstein that you find in Dark Souls 1 isn't the real Ornstein. So him showing up in Dark Souls 2, even though he's not called Ornstein, and there's where the questions lie, a lot of people wonder, is this actually him, or is it someone who's just wearing his armor, or maybe a relative who inherited the old Leo ring? Personally, I choose to believe the former. I, you know... We don't know. It's as simple as that. The lore is that damned ambiguous that they just straight up don't tell us. They don't even really drop any hints. And that's really my problem. I think it's Ornstein. It makes sense to me. But because they give no hints, really, who bloody knows? There is no right answer to that. Which is, isn't necessarily a bad thing because it's kind of the fun of the Dark Souls lore, you know? You make up your own lore, essentially, as you go along. Just whatever makes sense. It's kind of cool. It's like a choose-your-own-adventure book, kind of. But personally, I believe it's Ornstein. Though, I don't really have any reason for that. It just makes the most sense to me. So I'm hoping, as is getting back to the point I was making, that in Scholar of the First Sin, that when they get around to amending the lore and the item descriptions and shit, I hope they actually drop some hints. Not like, you know, just outright tell us. But just, just, some, just some more freaking information about Ornstein and why he's here. Because, like I say, you get the old Leo ring, it can only be assumed that that is the original old Leo ring, but just because he has that doesn't mean he's Ornstein. You could look at it that, yes, he's got the ring, but so did our character in the first game. Are we Ornstein? No, it doesn't make sense. We just picked it up because we killed him. So yeah, I don't know. Oh, by the way, this bridge, when I, when I did my blind run, totally thought that thing was going to crush me, and I kind of panicked when I saw it coming down at me. Good times, man. Good freaking times. Now, in here, I do believe we should get the Ring of Binding. What the Ring of Binding does is it... Uh, the way it works, when you die in Dark Souls 2, you lose, I think, 10% of your max HP, and you can die, what, five times, I think. Maybe it's 5%, I think it might be 5%, something like that. And then you die 10 times, and then you go down to 50% of your max HP. The only way to restore that back up again is to use a human effigy and revive your character. We're still human because we haven't died yet, but yeah, incrementally as you die, your HP will lower. The Ring of Binding halves that. So I think if we were to lose 10% of our max HP with the Ring of Binding on, you'd only lose 5%. It doesn't completely negate it, but it lowers it. Again, we got a co-op partner. Good. Let's go. The old Dragon Slayer. This dude in my blind run, I believe, killed me 11 times. 
I shit you not. It was somewhere around there. Like he, admittedly, again, it was my first time playing the game, and I was in the covenant. Holy shit! I was in the covenant of champions, but like God. <laughs> Come on, man! Son of a bitch. Well, there you go. As I was trying to say. Do was basically my nemesis, killed me way more than almost any other boss in the game. Not more than any other, but he was like third or fourth overall, something like that. I think, I think depressingly enough, the Royal Rat Vanguard probably killed me the most, which is just sad. But there you go. Anyone that says Ornstein's easy, I don't necessarily disagree. He doesn't have that much HP, he's usually pretty easy to dodge. But holy shit, the dude hits like a truck. Like, he really does. <laughs> He pretty much two shot me. It was kind of three shots, but I did. Oh god, didn't really get to heal after the third one. You know, whatever. Okay. <laughs> anyway, now that we've got a cop partner, we gotta try running back there. Hopefully, we'll be able to get the first guy back again. Though I kind of doubt it. But either way, we're gonna run back there. I'm not gonna fight any of the enemies, so hopefully this guy, this guy just runs as well. Otherwise, he's probably gonna get murdered horribly, and I'll feel like a complete bastard. I already feel like a bastard just for dying in co-op. <laughs> There you go. It's one of those weird things, like, I swear to god, I definitely die more in co-op than I do- Holy shit, that was so close to hitting me. See ya, dickholes! Okay, he's coming. But yeah, I swear to god, I die more in co-op than I do just single player. And... I think it's kind of a combination of the fact that it takes you longer to kill bosses, usually, if your partner isn't doing staggering amounts of damage, cause... When you summon someone, the boss gets a boost to their HP, or their defense. I think it's their defense. Doesn't really matter. Oh, you have a sign. It's the same guy. Good. Hopefully this time, I can uh, not let him down. But yeah. And I think it's also partly the fact that I... I don't know, I just get distracted. Like, I start watching my co-op partner. I'm like, oh look, I'm doing co-op. Isn't that entertaining? And then I get to stay. Yeah, I just die. It sucks. Oh shit. Buddy, you may want to go, because there's uh, a big fella about to smack you. Oh god. Hey, he rolled it. Good work. Okay, this time... This time you're mine. I'm gonna try and parry, but it... Son of a bitch. I swear to god, like, the first time I ever tried to parry that slide attack, I did it. And since then, I haven't been able to pull it off. I was like, oh, I'm brilliant, I can parry that shit. Nope. Complete fluke. You are nearly dead, sir. That makes me feel a little bit better about my own failure, but, sir. Uh... Yeah, old Steam Mail, like I say. Not much HP, usually fairly easy to dodge, but good lord does he hit hard. Like, he really does. Give me my souls. Okay. <laughs> I really can't believe my first death of the game came to this guy. Why do I have so much trouble? He shouldn't be that hard. God damn it. There's right, buddy. You stay over there. No, 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 no. Don't come after me. I want no trouble. Ow, they hit me. What the hell? There we go. And the old Dragon Slayer is down. Suck on that. <laughs> and they both walk right at almost exactly the same time. It was like that was planned. Had I known that was going to happen, I probably would have done it myself. Thank you. Goodbye. Now, very quickly, I'm going to crush the old Dragon Slayer Soul as well as the Dragon Rider Soul because I want them. The, you can actually make some good shit from the Rump Rider Soul. Uh, like, there's a good bow, there's a decent whole bird, a Not whole bird, a Twin Blade. But genuinely, I think the Red Iron Twin Blade is the best Twin Blade in the game, bar none. I might be wrong about that, but holy shit. That thing, it's not the quickest Twin Blade, but it's got some crazy combos, man. Like, considering how fast it is, it hits like a truck. It really does. You can get some that hit more often, but between power and speed, the Red Iron is kind of in a league of its own. Yeah, I believe this guy sells miracles and we don't need them, but we'll try talking to him anyway, just in case. Transient being. This is no place for one such as you. Be gone. You are not needed. Oh, fuck you, buddy. See, so, yeah, I believe we need... I can't remember the den. I think, is it a souvenir of reprisal? There's something you need, and you can get them by killing someone when you invade them as a blue phantom. And we have a bunch of blue orbs, because... The old knights tend to drop them. So, you can get one like that. Of course, you have to win the invasion. I think you can also find a couple later in the game. And I believe in New Game Plus, as I mentioned, there's a bunch of red dudes around Hades Tower. I think they all drop souvenirs as well. So, yeah, they're really easy to get. And that way, you give him one, he'll talk to you. You can also join his covenants. 
We don't really care about that. Like I say, he sells miracles that we don't need. But I believe he also sells some other decent stuff, though I can't really remember what the hell it is. But, uh, yeah, I think it's good. I, I don't really remember. Now we're going to buy six uh, regular Tainat Shards because that will allow us to fully upgrade. Well, not fully upgrade, but fully upgrade as far as regular Tainat Shards go. Uh, our Sorcerer Catalyst stuff. It's not called a catalyst anymore, is it? I was quite cow blade now. Anyway, so now it's plus three. The only way to upgrade it from this point is large shards, which we don't have enough of. We want to use those on our weapon. Speaking of which, now that we've got nine strength and 13 dex, we can actually equip the damn thing, so we don't have to use the shitty dagger. Though I will stress, the dagger, as you've seen, doing backstabs and parries and shits, I don't think it's anything better in the game. I may be wrong, but I'm pretty sure if it doesn't have the highest crit damage, it's certainly up there. So it's a good weapon, but... It's not really what we want. Plus, the falchion looks cool as hell. Now, I'm trying to think what we should do next. Do we have any shards? I don't remember. No, we don't. Well, let's go. Let's talk to Malentia. Oh, you again? Go on. It's on the cheap for you. <laughs> Gets creepier every time I hear it. Okay, so we're going to buy some life gems. I don't think we can buy many, but whatever. Here we go. Thank you kindly. <laughs> Ew. I don't like her laugh. It sounds like she's kind of choking on phlegm. Like... <laughs> it just sounds disgusting. And by the way, I do apologize for that, because that probably sounds disgusting as well, and it kind of hurt my throat a little bit. Anyway, let's go back to Hades Tower of Flame. I can't remember what the hell this place is called. This bonfire it doesn't really matter. Whatever. Maybe it's just called Hades Tower of Flame. Anyway, so now we can go over in this direction. Now, I want to stress, this area is 100% optional. You do not need to come here at all. But, there are some good shit here. There's also, like, three NPCs? Yeah, kind of three. And we want to do this. Because, again, this is where we can get a bunch of new spells. But, if you kill the... Ow! Dick! Holy shit, this weapon does so much damage, I like it. But yeah, if you kill the Pursuer, then you don't need to come here, and vice versa. If you come here and take out the Flexile Sentry, then you don't need to kill the Pursuer. I would always go with the Pursuer route, personally. Most people hate uh, No Man's Wharf, which is where we're about to be. Personally, I kind of like it. I think it's a pretty cool area. It's one of the bigger areas in the game, though. It's not gigantic. It's got, you know, uh, some cool shit going on, like the whole bolt mechanic. And I kind of like the boss flats. Personally, I like No Man's Wolf, though I am very much in the minority there. So just be aware of that. A lot of people really hate it. I don't think it's tough at all, as long as you know how to- Oh god! As long as you know how to deal with the flaily armed men, it's really not a bad area. So yeah, if you're having trouble with No Man's Wolf, hopefully this will help you out a little bit. And hopefully I won't die, because otherwise, I'll look like a son of a bitch. But we'll see. It, it has been known to happen. Many times. And by the way, I love the lighting in this place with this mod. Holy shit. That looks so damn cool. Duh. Yeah. It's called a dance of death, buddy. Ow. What the hell? Get out of here, you. Aww. Oh. I was trying to do the cool running attack. If you run in one hand the uh, falchion, you do like a spin attack thing. Didn't work. That sucks. Okay. Now, very quickly, whilst we're on the elevator, let's check out our helmet, see what we've got going on here. We have hollow armor. But I don't think we... No, we don't have the complete set. It's, it don't look that great anyway. I like the Royal Soul Drama, which is like uh, the non-rusted, shitty-looking version. We could go and buy that from... Morglin? I think Morglin's his name? The Merchant? But we have to spend like 5k souls or something there, which we haven't done yet, and we don't have that many anyway, so... We'll worry about that later. But yeah, I would like to get a decent set of armor. There is one we can grab around here. In fact... I believe this guy's kind of protecting it. We should be able to get it from the staircase up above this guy. Of course, we don't need to fight him. We could just run past, but where's the fun in that? Speaking of which, usually when I play this game off camera, I run past a lot of shit. It's just easier that way, so just be prepared for, you know, stupid deaths. Kind of in the vein of how I died to Ornstein, but, you know, to regular enemies. Because a lot of these enemies I just don't deal with. I just run past them. But I don't do that on camera because, you know, it's... It takes away half the point of Dark Souls. It ain't no damn fun to watch someone run past everything, so... Yeah, I'm probably gonna die in many stupid ways. Be prepared for that. And we get the Night Set. Not my favorite set of armor in the game. I, I don't really like... 
I have some weird thing where I like my character's head to either be completely shown, kind of like we are now, or completely enclosed. The Knight's Helm has like the visor up and you can see your face in there. I, something about that I just don't really like. But we'll see what we can wear for now. We might be able to wear... I can't remember, is it 70 or 75 percent? We can still roll at a decent speed. I think it's 70. Yeah, it's gonna be 71. Well, we'll try it. No, it gives us fat roll. Son of a bitch. Okay, well, no helmet for us. But hey, we got an upgrade. Again, not my favorite set of armor in the game, but it's the first one that you really get. And it ain't that bad. Again, unless we go and buy some from Morgan, but I'm a cheap son of a bitch. And here we have Luke Deal. Incredibly important character. What is it? I don't know you, and you don't know me. Things are better that way. Hey, turn that frown upside down. <laughs> you are an odd one. Normally, people keep a safe distance when they see this mask. But you... I'm called Lucatil. From the land of Mira to the far east, across the mountains. They say Drang Lake brims with powerful souls. And so I came to claim my share. But what a strange place. Even the ruins did not prepare me. You are an odd one indeed. I've always made a point of avoiding people. While well, you've made a point of engaging me. I can see that you are mid-journey. If you require assistance, I will help you. I come from Mira, a land of knights. My sword is always ready. Don't hesitate to call upon me. Whatever happens, I won't be missed. <laughs> Sweet. Okay, any more dialogue? Nope, okay, she's saying the same damn thing. Okay, so now that we've spoken to her, that means we can summon her for the Flexile Sentry, which you kind of need to do in order to progress her story. Anyway, I'm getting away to here. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, it was appreciated. I'll like, and I will see you next time for more Dark Souls 2.